In this video, we're going to look at an application of the Bohr model. So we're looking at a problem here that we're going to use the Bohr model in order to solve. So let's read through the problem first. It says, how much energy is required to excite the electron and hydrogen from the level n equals 1 to level n equals 2? Also calculate the wavelength of light that must be absorbed in order to reach this excited state. So, um, so electronic excitations in atoms um, is a very complicated thing. And in fact, you could probably have an entire class just devoted to excitations and excited states. But in the Bohr model, it's actually fairly simple. So this is what you want to envision, right? You have some, let's say you have some wavelength of light, right? You got some light that comes in. And what's going to happen is that light, if it's at the right frequency, is going to excite this electron from its current level, n equals 1, to a higher level, n equals 2, right? So now our electron is excited to n equals 2, right? So basically you have some light radiation that comes in. It's able to excite that electron from um, a lower level to a higher energy level. And so now it has more angular momentum. It's in a different level. And so it's going to have a different energy. So what the question is asking you is how much energy is necessary to make this process happen, right? How much energy are, is it going to require for this electron to be excited, right? And it's asking you what wavelength of light you need, but we'll get to that as well. Um, so what you're going to have to do is you want to calculate an energy for each level, right? So there'll be an energy associated with the second level, right? We'll call that E2. We also will have an uh, energy level associated with this initial uh, orbital, right? So E1, right? So in order to calculate how much energy is necessary to get from E2, from E1 to E2, you're going to want to calculate the energy of each one and then take the difference, right? So you're going to do delta E is equal to E2 minus E1, right? So that's going to give us the energy necessary to make this excitation happen. So let's get that first, right? So we're going to want to calculate an energy for each level. So for E equals one, in each level, we're just going to use the Bohr model, right? So we have negative 2.178 times 10 to the negative 18 joules, right? Now, um, for Z in this case, they're telling us that it's hydrogen, so that means that the nucleus is going to have a charge of positive 1, right? So that numerator is going to be 1 squared. And N in this case is 1. So again, 1 squared in the denominator. So since everything's 1, there's really no need for us to do much math here. The energy for um, the electron in the first energy level is going to be 2.178 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. Okay, perfect. So this gives us our first energy level. Now we need to do the exact same for the second energy level, E2, right? So using the same uh, Bohr model equation, right? Times 10 to the negative 18 joules, right? Again, we're still dealing with hydrogen. So this numerator is still gonna be one squared, but now we're in the second energy level. So N is equal to two. So it's gonna be two squared in the denominator. And so now when you crank through the numbers here, you get that E2 is equal to negative 5.445 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. All right, so that gives us E2. So now the last thing we have to do in order to calculate the energy necessary to cause this excitation is get the delta E in this case, right? So delta E is going to be equal to E2 minus E1. So we have E2 is negative 5.445 times 10 to the negative 19 joules, right? Minus negative 2.178 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. So taking this difference, we get a delta E of 1.66 or 1.63 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. Okay, so this is the energy that's necessary to excite the, um, the electron from the energy level N equals 1 to the energy level N equals 2, right? So 
that's the energy necessary. But we also have a second part to this question. They also want us to calculate the wavelength of light that's necessary to make this happen as well. Right. So how do we do that? Well, we found out from the photoelectric effect that, you know, all this radiation can be viewed as stream of particles called photons. Right. So really, we just need to calculate the energy of a photon or the wavelength of a photon that would give us this energy. Right. So we need the wavelength of a photon that would give us this energy of 1.63 times 10 to the negative 18. Right. So let me do this one in a different color. So basically, we're going to use E is equal to uh, HC over lambda. Right. And we want to calculate the wavelength. So we want to do the math here to get lambda. So lambda is equal to HC over E. And then from here, we just plug in, right? Because uh, Planck's constant is a constant. Speed of light, also a constant. The energy we're going to use is the energy necessary to cause this excitation. So we got everything we need. So lambda is going to be equal to 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. And speed of light, 2.9978 times 10 to the 8 meter per second. And the energy here is going to be the energy necessary to cause the excitation. So we got 1.633 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. Right. Looking at how our units shake out here. We get joules canceling out. In the numerator and denominator. Um, in the numerator, we have uh, time seconds in the Planck's constant, and we have per second in the speed of light, so those cancel out. So you're just left with meters. So switching back to green. So um, this gives you a final answer of 1.216 times 10 to the negative seven meters. And so this lambda um, in nanometers, just to give you a uh, example, kind of showing you this would be 121.6 nanometers. So this would be firmly in that UV uh, region of light for uh, for lambda, right? So so this is how what we've done here. Basically, we've kind of introduced that this is physically what an electronic excitation is, right? We calculated the energy necessary to cause this specific um, electronic excitation from n equals one to n equals two. And we were able to use um, the energy of a photon to uh, calculate the wavelength that would be necessary to cause this excitation.